Okay, so we're going to start by building the fan assembly at the bottom of the handle. Um, I had already done this um, because I sort of jumped ahead and I wanted to see if it would work. Um, but I'm just going to explain how that works pretty simply. So you're going to start with uh, your ducted fan piece and take your motor, which will be the big 180, um, probably a Hellcat. Um, and that's a little loose inside, just tiny. So what you're going to do is get some electrical tape and just wrap that around maybe twice or three times. I think I did twice. And then you'll be able to just very snugly shove that in. Um, you can press on the bottom here or on something if you need to get it in there. And then that's very secure. Then I'm going to take this fan and you see there's a hole there. So that just slides on like a flywheel would onto there. I mean, it's a bit tight, so what I did is actually held it over the top of a toaster for a while, just using that hot air to heat it up, so it expanded a bit, got a bit softer, um, and then I was able to easily press it on all the way, and then it would cool down the clamp. So then you'd have that already, and you go over to your fan piece here. Now what I did is I took my wires and I shoved them through the holes here, I've tried to get them as the exact size of the wire. Um, you might have to file it slightly, but push them through, get quite a bit of slack out so you've got uh, wires to play with. Uh, remember to then slide on some heat shrink and then solder them to your motor tabs and uh, whack that heat shrink on. Uh, then all, all I've done here is I've just slowly, because these aren't really loose, which is good, uh, I just sort of slowly pull these back and push this in um, until you got it all the way into position. And this will sit in its final position, it sits against a ridge, so you'll know that you've got it in all the way. Um, so now it's like that. Then you can take the grill, which goes on the front here. Um, you may be able to see a slight pattern here. So the grill will go in and then rotate in order to lock in place with these nubs. Um, where will I get a line there? So I'll pop it in like this. And uh, pressing this in all the way. Oh, what have I done here? All right, just make sure that you've got this properly seated flat. Um, I didn't have that just then, which is why it didn't go in all the way. Um, so I've got that seated flat now. I'm going to try and not budget too much. There we go. So the grill should um, come completely flush in all the way. And um, that is what secures the fan at the front uh, to make sure it doesn't come out at all. So now it's fully secure forwards and backwards. Um, and then to lock this in place, I'll just use some pliers, but just give that a rotate. All the way just check the back um it was a concern of mine that the, the motor might the whole thing might twist when you put the grill in which would be bad because then that would be pulling these wires out um but it it hasn't but i just mentioned it just to make sure that as you twist that grill in that uh the motor and the, the fan and everything is staying in position and not rotating also once this is all in place it, it's clamped in pretty well so it, it shouldn't move after that. So that is your fan assembly. Okay, so now we're going to attach the fan assembly to the bottom of your handle piece here. We've got some uh, features, some ribs here, and a, a dovetail feature here, which engage with uh, this section here and this dovetail up here, and that's how it's going to connect. So first we're going to just get the wires in the center of the handle there just making sure they're not caught on anything that's going to be important and um, you just want to do this slowly and a bit at a time so i'm just going to start pushing the silver handle up onto the rails slightly so that's on again just making sure that my wires are not caught that's fine just going to continue to just wiggle that up slightly 
And at this point here, you can see the wires might want to bulge out. So again, I'm just going to make sure that I'm pulling those through. Not too hard, but just to make sure that they're not going to get caught. I'll go that up some more. Well, at this point, this may want to bend slightly. This has got to the dovetail. So just be careful of this. I'm just going to push it on a bit. This bit tends to be tighter than here. Um, so now you want to make sure that you're pushing both at the same time. Again, just a little bit at a time. Oh, you can kind of hear it clicking in place. Move this forwards. Oh, it clicks up a bit. Okay. And checking the wires. Okay. It's still fine. Click this up some more. Oh, there we go. Move that up, move that up. It's kind of like a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this, back and forth. You don't want to rush this. You just want to keep it nice and slow. Make sure you don't break anything. Okay, at this point I'm practically almost there. So I can just push that all the way. Make sure this is all the way up. Oh, there we go, <laughs> yep. Okay, we're good. The wires, you can, s oh, you can't exactly see the light. Um, the wires are now inside the handle and they will quite nicely just snake right up the corner of the handle on, on each side. Um, and that's connected there. And that's not got any glue, but again, with the print being, having kind of a good interference, this isn't gonna go anywhere. So the next step is to put the trigger in. Um, we have these pieces here, which help keep the trigger in place. It may look slightly different um, in the final files, as, um, as you can see, I chopped this down because it was too big. Um, so I'll be polishing up the final bits, but it will all function the same way. So you're gonna take this, and this slot here at the top allows the trigger to drop through. So, Oh, yeah. Before we do that, you want to take your trigger and your spring and put it in here. Just make sure that's all the way in. Yep, it is. Okay. It's a bit of a strong spring, which you need to activate the switches. Um, so it's a slight pain to put in, but once it's in, it does the job well. Um, I'll show you this way. So I'm going to take the trigger like this and put it in and then start to bend it around. And at this point, you're then gonna to wanna to get your thumb and you're gonna to have to kind of push it in. Ooh. You can see the trigger sort of popped out a bit, but that's fine. I'm also getting my finger now and pulling the trigger back. You wanna hold the trigger back as far as you can while you're pushing it in until it can pop forward. So pulling that back, pushing against the spring and pushing it down. Oh, there we go. So now that's in, it can, that can move. But it feels awful because the other parts aren't in yet. <laughs> so next you're gonna take this piece um, and that nub is what the spring's gonna rest on. And this, can curve down into place. So we're just gonna allow it to go in like this and just follow that curve as much as possible. Slightly tight fit, which is good. There we go. That was just a spring popping back into place. I'll just have to uh, normally the spring pops on, this one didn't, so I'm just going to have to pull that into place. Okay, I've got that on now, um, but that piece could still come back out, possibly, so we just want to lock that in place with this piece here. You'll see that on the left here is a shorter side, and uh, on the right is a bit of a longer angle, so that's the way you want it. And it's going to sit in place like this. So pop it in like that. 
And then you're just going to twist it so that it then comes flat. There we go. And so that should be sitting on top of the other piece, wedging it against here. And now we can pull the trigger and that's a lot better. Okay, I just wanted to show you how the micro switches and the trigger are working in this design. I've brought a light over to try and make this clearer. Um, but we're using two of these Omron 21 amp switches in this design. Depending on the ones you get, um, you may have to snip a bit off the end of the leg or um, bend it down as I had to do in this case so that it would fit in. Um, annoyingly, the legs don't all come out the same way. Uh, but it's very easy to bend with some pliers. Um, so see what you need to do to make those fit, but it wouldn't be too much work. So yeah, that one goes on top. So we have one, two, three, and four pegs here, which are coming out, and those are gonna go in the holes of the switch. So I'll pop those in. You want those just to be snug, but not too much, it just fits in like that. Um, the rest of the components are gonna sit on top of this and keep this in place, which is why you don't need to be uh, screwing it down or anything. But I'll release, there we go, the trigger, and you see it's clicked that. And I'll put this one in behind it. Again, just a bit of press. I just gave these a light sand, uh, sand on the pegs um, so that it would go in nicely. I don't want it to be super tough to get on. But now you can see that, boom, boom, <laughs> there we go. Um, so you pull the trigger back to release the first switch and then continue to pull back and it will hit the other switch. So you got your rev and fire. And you're not gonna you're not gonna accidentally um, just release the fire button and then oh, I've, I've stopped revving. Or you just want to rev but you've accidentally fired too soon. Um, it's quite easy to tell when you're in the middle position. Oh and while we're here actually <laughs> this is how compact the whole thing had to be. The third switch for when you're just activating the blower while you're reloading sits in like that. So yeah, not a lot of spare room in this thing. Okay, so we're gonna start wiring up the rest of the circuit now, but I think it's important to realize how this goes together first. So you have your main handle section here and this is your kind of flywheel barrel all in one piece. Um, I'm just gonna call it the flywheel cage. So what this is gonna do is sit on top here. So I'll just put this other motor in first. I'm using Krakens, I believe, the 3S ones, yeah. Um, so the motors handily help locate um, in here. And so that, should just slide on, there we go. Um, and that's gonna have two screws on either side again to help lock that down. But this is what's gonna be sitting in here. So the wires from your LiPo and um, the ones here from the fan are gonna come out of this hole here and then they're gonna diverge left or right and they're gonna have to fit down you know, the side of these channels below here. There is quite a bit of room, I'd say, for the wires eventually, but you just want to make sure that you realise this whole round section is going to be sitting here, and you leave a bit of slot so you can get the wires. Okay, so this is a bit of a difficult thing to solder up. It just takes a while, and you want to make sure that the wire lengths are exactly correct. So I'm going to make a separate PDF document um, to walk you through just the wiring itself to hopefully make that easier. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that was painful. Um, you definitely wanna be confident with your soldering to fit all this in. Well, it's not, it's difficult, I guess it just took me like four hours. But then again, this is the first time I've actually to try and figure out the links and everything. Um, so I'm gonna try and make a guide that makes this easier. 
but uh, it all does fit in. Trigger still works. Um, still need to put the XT60 on, but there you go. Okay, so now I'm going to take the flywheel cage and barrel section and insert that over everything else. So start by um, trying to locate the motors into this area. And we also pull, this is able to wiggle at the moment, so I'm going to pull that up straight. Go. kind of getting this wheel slightly over the ledge I'm trying to get these in place that's going there we go that's good good just slowly pushing that down now just checking that everything else is staying in place. Okay, um, the little problem I had was that the, uh, the diode, does that show up? You can kind of see the shiny arm here. Um, the diode um, was slightly under the flywheel cage, just stopping it from coming out, so I just shoved it it's a solid wire so i just shoved it over a bit and i was able to go down um also just had to make sure that like you should make sure that this switch is seated in place properly and it's not popped out at all then just making sure that the other wires are able to come underneath and that uh it's just sitting properly um and that's all good now um so it's always smart to check your circuit before you <laughs> do too much work so i've put some tape on here to see uh, if they're spinning and the other things I can probably figure out. Okay, so testing with a very uh, low power power source in case everything blows up. With the first pull of the trigger, the flywheels should spin and the blower should come on. <laughs> Fantastic. And then with a full pull, uh, the wheel should start feeding. Brilliant. You can just see the fan in there. And then uh, with the thumb, only the fan should go for when you're loading balls. Nice. That's all working. Brilliant. Just to mention quickly, um, I have got holes here to put uh, screws in to mount the motors. But it's not strictly necessary because just in this configuration, the motors are um, clamped between the top and the bottom, so they're not going anywhere. So here we go. I've put the connector on now. And again, I'll try and specify lengths of wire for what I've used in, in a more detailed wiring diagram, but it's about that long. What you want to remember is that you want the wire to be able to be pushed back right into that corner and then go straight down because obviously the battery's got the right angle here. So it's gonna push the wires in that direction. Um, so let's connect this up, see how well it fits. So there we go. Just shoving these wires into the corner. Um, hey, hey, that is tight. Okay. Now, um, the door, which is at the back of the handle, this, um, I slightly, um, I chopped this piece off because I wasn't initially going to do this, but this is going to have two nubs that you'll be able to just squeeze into here because you'll be able to pull us apart slightly and then that will snap back in and hold your door. Uh, mine's gonna be a bit wonky, um, but the final files will work fine. So this will rotate upwards 
and hopefully go into place. There you go. Now, this will also have a magnet at the top, so you can see the little circle there and circle there. Um, so there'll be two magnets that will keep this together. I just don't have them in at the moment due to the uh, lockdown and all that. So once that shuts, that should be pretty secure. You have your handle. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach the rest of the shell pieces to finish this off. So we'll start with um, the kind of top middle section. This uh, kind of sticky out triangle here, as that goes in, that's going to slip just inside there. And that is what wedges your pusher into place so it doesn't wibble and wobble around. So just make sure that you've got that in there. Well, and the way I've wired this, I want to make sure that that's inside. But then this pretty much just pushes straight down. Make sure. Oh, give me one sec. Brilliant. Okay, I got that. And also, um, you might have seen the features on top of the flywheel cage and barrel um, will slot into some features on the underside of that shell there. That's all in place nicely. It will be clamped down as we put the other pieces on. So I'm going to take the rear section. Again, that's got a dovetail feature which slides into the back. Um, just make sure that none of the wires are going to be in the way of the barrel because those two parts are going to mate together. Let's see. There we go. Nice, and that should be flush at the back. And now, yeah, the front section, you've got to make sure that you've put your octagon piece on before the next part. So here it is. That's what I call the octagon piece. And this has a little nub which uh, fits underneath there. So I'm going to put it down low. And then now I'll push it up into position. There we go, and find its way. And we can take the front shroud piece. Again, this is another dovetail. It should be somewhat snug as you put it on. That's okay. There we go, so I clicked that in. Should try and go in nicely and you have a bit of barrel sticking out. I would have made this orange, but I didn't have orange PLA on me. And then the genius of this is that you put the top rail on to secure everything in place with one screw. So again, another dovetail that will come over from the front. Press this on, be careful not to snap it. Almost there. Okay, I'm just going to finish this off with a bit of force. All right, so I've got that fully all the way on now. And that one section there is where we're going to put our screw to lock this in place. But it kind of, kind of turns out with my print that this is pretty friction fit anyways. But if you can ideally get a looser print, then this will make sure nothing comes out. There we go. So now this section is attached through the rail to here. So none of them can come off left or right. And uh, this middle section can't move up because this is keeping it down. So that's all locked in place. There we go. And now I did forget to just do the bottom piece earlier. Um, so this is the uh, loading lid um, to put your balls into the tube. We have our lid piece here. Again, two holes for the two magnets, um, same size as the ones above. Uh, again, I don't have this on me at the moment, but you literally just put a dab of super glue in and press the magnet in, making sure that you've got these the right way around so they're actually gonna <laughs> attract instead of repel. 
So what I'm going to do is just pop this in here. And then take your 3D printed pin and just um, press that through. Be careful with the pin because it is thin. Um, just wiggle it through. Um, but I'm actually just going to give this a few light taps of a hammer just to slowly get it all the way through. Okay, I've tapped that all the way through. Should be flush on both sides. Now I just can flip open and flip shut. And having a magnet in there will make sure that stays shut when it's upside down. And so that should be uh, your fully completed build. Got the fan blowing air through the back. The loading lid. This opening up so you can access your battery. Shutting that again. And then all the goods trapped up at the top. Now the observant among you might have asked, how does the ball get from here? up to here that's pretty important and that is what those little features are for in the back and you combine those with these parts right here so these screw onto the hose and then the three features again will just go in and twist and lock into place like that same one on the bottom